On this day in section 8.1, uh, key features of a quadratic function, we are going to be identifying key features of a quadratic function. So there is a new type of function. We've talked about quadratics before, but now we're going to relate it to function. How do we graph these puppies here? So by way of review, uh, you should have already graphed um, the parent function y equals, so here is y equals absolute value of x. So it's this um, linear with a bounce, linear with a bounce, like um, a rooftop uh, inverted or um, like a hockey puck bouncing off a wall because the hockey puck can travel in a straight line along the ground. So uh, graphing these guys here. If you did uh, two, two times absolute value of negative two, then you get two times two, which is four. So now we can graph this point right here, negative two, positive four. So negative two, positive four lives right there. Continuing that journey, if I plug in a positive two into the absolute value, I get the exact same value there as we did before. So the two positive four lives right there. And the next one is going to go off grid, so I'm going to have to estimate that. So 2 times the absolute value of 4, and we get 2 times uh, positive 4, which is 8. And that one we can graph somewhere up here. Now one thing I forgot to mention uh, is I should have had you graph 0, uh, 0 uh, when you plug in a 0, and the output would have been 0. So that's an, um, super important for this graph here because that would be our bouncing point, our bouncing point. So the ultimate result is this, where we get a V-shape, but notice what's true about the arms. The arms are closer together. The arms are closer together than the original function. The arms are closer together, but opening in the same direction. To finish up here with range and domain, uh, domain, remember it's what are the values of this blue function of x. Notice that uh, anything here works. It goes continues going up, 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 up forever, um, but it continues to go left and right forever as well. So we can say our domain here is all real numbers, but our range. So the range only goes up uh, past starting at zero, zero. So y is greater than or equal to zero. It includes the zero and it goes up forever. So in other words, you could say only positive numbers and zero. Now, if we recall, there is a fast way to graph this, um, this function here, actually any of these functions, because what we learned about was we had this basic function, and I'll write it out here, is that we had y equals a times x minus h plus k. So to review, this is our super, super function. Uh, the a directs the width, uh, excuse me, affects the, the direction and the width. Does it open up or down? Is it wide or is it uh, narrow? Uh, the h here affects how it's shifted left or right, the function, the shape of it, excuse me. And lastly, the k is up and down. So the thing that we considered here was um, the vertex is 0, 0. Why? Because the h and the k are my 0, 0. So I start at 0, 0, so I actually know where to begin right here. Here's 0, 0, so that's where I will begin. Next, uh, does this puppy open up or down? Well, based on the negative that I see in the front right there, we know that this opens downward. Sort of like a sad face, because it's negative, it has, it's going to open downward like a sad face there. And the slope is we'll call the slope, that number in the front there, a 2. <coughs> but we're going to be going in the downward direction. So all we do is here. We count down 2, right 1. 
But we also do down to left one. And then we repeat that down to right one, down to left one. Notice that everything is bouncing off that, uh, across that line there. And there we go. Uh, for me, it's easy to see because I'm using multicolors. If you're using a single color there, uh, you might, your, your blue line here bounces, but yours might look like it goes all the way through. So I don't know if you can adjust things or color it or something um, because this is one function, the V, and the rooftop is a separate function. All right, so that brings us into uh, what we're talking about today is we're going to do the exact same thing. We're just going to change the shape. So instead of talking about V-shaped function, we're going to be talking more about a U-shaped function. And I forgot to mention here about my domain and range. Domain is all real numbers. And the range in this case is y is less than or equal to 0. So it's flipped upside down. So I'll get you started on this one here. What does the function y equals x squared graph to? So if we just plug in a negative 2 right there, we end up with a positive 4. So I need to make a quick axis of symmetry. <coughs> And then we, excuse me, uh, coordinate plane there. And now we have uh, negative 2, positive 4. So negative 2, positive 4 lives there. Now that we have these points here, notice it's tempting to draw straight when we connect them, but beware. So do not just do this, straight, 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 and straight. What happens is every time we have um, multiple points that show up, and if it's, they're not collinear, then you need to make it fit somehow with a curve. So if it takes you a couple tries to make a nice curve here, and then it's got to just extend upward like so. Domain. Domain's the same. All real numbers. And the range happens to be the same as the parent function of the previous one. So y is greater than or equal to 0 here. So we've got a couple vocabulary terms that we want to look at. Uh, first off, the function itself, the function itself is called the quadratic function. The shape of the graph is called a parabola. Don't confuse that with a parable although spelled similarly, a parabola. The turning point, because as we can see here, we're going down, 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 down. Then we hit the bottom, and we go up, 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 up. So that turning point has the same name as in the other function, and we call that a vertex. And of course, a little bit hard to see, so I'll change color here. This line right here that passes through the vertex is like a mirror for both sides. It bounces on either side. And there we go. This is called the axis of symmetry. And it divides the graph into two sections that are um, reflections of each other. So where are parabolas used? All over the place, surprisingly enough, you have them in your house um, and you see them when you drive. They are everywhere and every single baseball game you've gone to uses parabolas. A parabola uh, are often used in engineering to focus waves and light and the path of a projectile is also a parabola. So if I were to, uh, if there's a ball and it gets knocked, kicked or whatever, it's gonna fly in a parabolic motion, okay? The ball gets kicked. 
Or think about a flashlight. The flashlight has a bulb. But around that bulb is a lens. And it always, if you look at it uh, as a cross section, it always does this. And the reason why it has this shape, and you don't have to draw all these lines, but it might be helpful, is that the point of this is when the, the bulb is shining, remember that light goes off in all directions, right? Light goes off in all directions from the bulb. What happens is it hits the mirror and it bounces in this direction. Every single one will bounce off at a different angle. Every single one will bounce off at a different angle. So as we zoom in there, each of these right here are different angles. And what does that do? It focuses the light forward. Now it doesn't focus the light to a single point like a laser does. What this does is focus it just forward. Now the next thing we're going to look at is how to transform a quadratic function. So how do the domain and range of g of x equals 2x squared compared to the original parent function of f of x equals x squared. Now we've already done the table here for x squared. So we got 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4. Well notice to get from f of x to g of x, all we do is multiply by 2. We're essentially doubling. See here's my parent function, there's my parent function, we're just doubling. Which means all we take is these, the f of x, the output, and we double that. So in doubling everything here, I get ocho, dos, cero, dos, ocho. Now, the parent function is already graphed here. And just to show you those points, here's negative one, one, and here's one, one. Um, here is negative two, four, and here's two, four. And we even went up here to three, nine, and negative three, nine. Okay, so let's graph the next one. What does the function g of x look like here? Well, we've got a 0, 0 here. At negative 1, we're at a positive 2. And at po positive 1, we're at a positive 2. And the same thing here for the 2. At the 2, we're actually at 8. Negative 2, we're at 8. And positive 2, we're at 8. So when we connect the dots here, remember, make sure to make a nice little curve. We don't want to make straight lines there. Curve is a gentle... One thing we don't want to do is this. Don't come back on yourself like that because that makes it no longer a function. So we're just keeping it so that it keeps going out like that. Arrows because the range and domain keep going in those particular directions. So the question is how does the domain and how does the range compare? Well, notice, and I'm looking at g of x for this one here, g of x domain is all real numbers still. So no change. And the range is also y is greater than or equal to 0. So as we see, there is no change in the domain and range. So what does change? Well, notice here that my parabola is a little bit more narrow than the original parent function, which is opened up a little bit wider. So if we were to make a conjecture, how does this 2 affect the shape of my graph? We might say, well, it makes it a little bit more narrow or narrower than the parent function. Next, what is the average rate of change for f of x? So we're going to look at the parent function rate of change, and I'm going to use blue here. Well, at negative 2, and what we're just focusing on is this region right here. And also it asks us from 1 to positive 2. So let's look at the f of x values. Here is the height of the function and there's the height of the function at negative 1. So how much up and down do I go? Well, uh, in this case, my slope goes down 3 and right 1. So how does that translate? That translates to negative 3, positive 1, or simply just negative 3. So there's the slope of this, and it's called the average rate of change. Now, why does it say average rate of change? Well, notice here, if I were to connect the actual two dots, we get that. And notice that they are, there is a gap, right, between the original function and the rate of change estimate there. That's because of the curves 
the rate of change constantly changes. So notice here, the rate of change is a little more shallow. Down here, the rate of change is zero. Over here, the slope at this point is like a one. The slope here is more steep. So the rate of change changes. So that's why they say average rate of change. So let's repeat that exact same process, but this time we're gonna use from positive one to positive two. And we notice that this slope is pretty much the same. It goes up one, two, three. So up three and right one, which translate to positive three, positive one, or simply that. So how do we approach it for the red, excuse me, the uh, yellow line, the g of x, g of, g of x. So I'm gonna use green here. So here's my uh, negative g of negative one, and here's my g of negative two. So how much up, down, left, or right do we go? Well, we go positive one to the right, and we go down one, two, three, four, five, and six, and six. So in this case here, we go the slope, is down six, right one, so my slope is negative six. Well, let's do it again. How about this one here? Up one, two, three, four, five, six. Same thing, and right one. So this slope is the exact same, but opposite. There we go. So notice that my g of x, which has an x, uh, excuse me, a an A of two right there in the front, uh, the slope is double. The average slope is double. So it's more steep than the original parent function. Next thing we're gonna look at is domain and range of, excuse me, the domain of, of the function, is it increasing or is it decreasing here? So I'm gonna sketch real quick the parent function again. Um, because f of x is what we're looking at. So here's the parent function, and just a quick sketch here brings me something like this. Okay, so when we are considering increasing and decreasing, imagine that you are a ball and you are on the function there. Um, as you are rolling it from left to right, just like we're reading, uh, what is happening? Well, notice what's happening with the ball as it goes here. It's gonna go down, 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 down here. And then at this point, it's not doing down or up, but then up here, it goes up, 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 up. Now obviously gravity's gonna pull it down eventually, but for our purposes, we're just going maybe like a roller coaster or something like that. So what is this? How do we interpret this? This section here is decreasing. And we say the function is decreasing or it is a decreasing function. And what is the domain in which the function decreases? Well, it's this territory here, over there. So when asked, when does it decrease? Oh, well, it's decreasing when x is less than zero. Well, notice, when is it increasing? Well, it increases in this region. Increasing function. And when does that occur? Well, that occurs when x is greater. So that's how we can describe that, that x is greater than zero. We have an increasing function there. Please work on the try it here, pause, and check out the answers in a moment. And there you go. Next thing we're gonna do, and this is best if you practice it first, so I suggest taking a moment and scanning this and checking out the graph here. If you don't have access or something else, uh, we're going to walk through here. So I'm gonna pull up Desmos here and we're gonna put in the parent function of x equals, um, of y equals x squared. So y equals x squared. And this is what we end up getting right there. Okay, now that's the parent function. So what if we adjust it by putting a variable in the front like so? If I add a slider to that, and I forgot to square things, and there we go. Okay, so notice what happens as we slide things along. So as A 
increases. So here we're at positive 2, positive 3, positive 4. So notice what's happening with the, the arms of the parabola. They're shrinking closer together. In other words, they're getting more narrow. Well, when do they get more wide? Well, here's the 1 right here. They're at 1. And then it starts to get more wide this way. Notice the blue is moving out. Blue is moving out. Blue is moving out. It's getting more wide, 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 wide. Oh, and then it flatlines. Oh, then it flips upside down. But notice a key thing I want to point out to you is that it is wider still, right there. Notice this here is wider than right here. So even in this territory, although this is negative, this region right here, where A is 0.4, is still wider. So let's see what happens. Now, as we shrink that down, let's see what happens. So drag this up. Oh, look at that. Now we're upside down and more narrow. Here we're more narrow, but in the same direction. Here we're now in an upside down world. In fact, this right here is upside down and the same size. Oh, positive one versus negative one. Look, now we're exactly where we were, and now we're the same width, but just upside down. So, using that information, let's fill in what we have here. So, when a, the absolute value of a, well, let's go down here. When a is greater than zero, in other words, when gray, gray, when a is in the positives versus when a is in the negatives, uh, it opens upward. And when A is in the negative, it opens downward. So something to consider about that is um, as A is positive, we often think of positive as a happy thing. And so there you go, you've got a happy face. When A is negative, we go to sad face, like that. All right, so that's one way to remember it. Next, what about when A, the absolute value of A is greater than 1? And the extremes we showed you of that were when it was uh, 10 and negative 10, for example, 10 and negative 10. Well, uh, notice what happens is that the parabola is more narrow. But what happens when we get into numbers like this? So for example, for example, we had 0 0.4 and we had negative 0 0.4. What do we know? Well, it turns out it's more wide or wider. And there we go. So this is the conclusion of these here. Hope that helps. Ciao. La da 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 pace.